All right, this is Jeff Mills from CDL Book Club on the CDL Book Club grounds doing a greatest pre-trip inspection master edition. And I'm gonna start with my keys in my pocket and my wheel is chalk. And I'm gonna enter the vehicle using three points of contact. We're gonna start inside. So I'm starting with my hand on the handrail, one foot on the step, one foot on the ground. Entering and exiting three points of contact. And I'm gonna put my key in the ignition, not turning the truck on, and start inspecting with my seat belt because that's the first thing you wanna do when you get inside the vehicle. So my seat and my seat belt properly locks and my belt is not frayed. My, my steering wheel has no more than two inches of play. My mirrors are adjusted for me. And now I'm going to turn the vehicle, just, just turning the key on so my dash lights up. My ABS light went out. It properly works. So I'm gonna turn the vehicle on using a safe start. Now, my interior light, my map light properly works. My city horn properly works. My air horn properly works. And now I'm just gonna turn my lights on and I'm gonna start with the with your left turn signal indicator, my right turn signal indicator, and my four-way flasher indicators, they properly work. My high beam indicator properly works. And now I'm gonna, my trans, you don't have to mention the trans. The, the temperature gauge properly works. It rises when the vehicle warms up. If it reaches 250, the vehicle, you want to place it out of service. And the vehicle, uh, the, the temperature gauge rises when the vehicle warms up. The oil pressure gauge should read 5 to 20 PSI. It properly works. My vault meter is electrical. It's right here. It should read between 12 and 14 bolts it properly works my tachometer it properly works my speedometer properly works my fuel i have enough fuel to perform my test and it reads more than half the full um my air pressure gauges they they've reached the governor cutout rate at 120 they properly work now i'm going to turn my defrost on you got to you gotta have your, in order for your defrost, you gotta have the heat on. You turn the vent on and you just feel at the top and feel down the bottom. They properly work. Then you turn the vents on and they properly work. Go ahead and turn that off. And now we're gonna go back to, I'm just gonna make windshield wipers spray and flush to the windshield. They properly work. And now, I'm ready to perform my air brake test. But before I mention my air brake test, I'm just gonna set my emergency equipment. My fully charged fire extinguisher, ABC fire extinguisher, is secure. My three reflective triangles and spare fuses are secure. And now I'm ready to perform my tug test. So the first thing I'm gonna do is push in my parking brake, put my vehicle in drive, tap my accelerator, and my trailer brake, which is applied, should hold. Starting now, push the parking brake in, put my vehicle in neutral drive, tap the accelerator, my, my trailer brake held, it properly works. I'm going to leave my vehicle in drive, pull the parking brake out, push in the trailer brake, and tug against my parking brake now. My parking brake held, it properly works. So now I'm gonna put my vehicle in neutral, pull the trailer brake back out, and explain now my service brake test. For my service brake test, I would put my vehicle in drive, drive five miles an hour forward, and apply the brake, and it should not, my vehicle should not pull to the left or to the right, no unusual feeling. Now, I'm gonna put three fingers up. These three fingers represent that I'm gonna one, turn the truck off, two, turn the key on so my dash lights up, three, push in the parking brake and trailer brake in that order. One. 
turn the truck off. Two, turn the key on so my dash lights up. Three, push in the parking brake and trailer brake in that order. Let the air settle. Now, I'm going to hold my service brake down for one minute and I should not lose no more than four PSI within that minute starting now. Fifteen seconds left. Five seconds. Move my foot. I did not lose no more than four PSI within that minute. Now I'm going to fan my brakes down to 60 PSI and my low air pressure buzzer and indicator should come on. And then I'll continue to fan my brakes down to 40 to 20 PSI and my parking brake and trailer brakes should pop out starting now. Fan it. My low air pressure indicators came on and buzzers, they came on. They probably work. I'm continue fanning, keeping my eye on my parking brake and trailer brake. My trailer brake popped out and I'm waiting for my parking brake to pop out. They both popped out. You do not want to touch these brakes for nothing. You fan those brakes until they pop out. They properly work. Now, I'm going to turn my truck off. And now, we're going to get out. And I'm going to start my exterior pre-trip. Starting on the passenger side. Now... We're just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna work my way to the front and then go to the passenger side. So I'm gonna start with my ID clearance lights and my turn signal lights on my truck and on my trailer. Amber in the front, red to the rear on my truck and trailer. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, no condensation. Next, my windshield is not cracked, not broken and secure, no obstructions, no illegal stickers. The seal around the windshield is not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry, rotted, afraid. The windshield wipers are not cracked, not broken, and secure. They're flush to the windshield. The hood mirror or fender mirror, spot mirror, and the flat mirror. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. My headlights are not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation, they're clean and clear. My suspension is balanced. If it wasn't balanced, I would place my vehicle out of service. My tag on my truck and on my trailer, they're secured with no outdated stickers. No leaks or puddles or broken glass underneath the vehicle. If I had that, I would place my vehicle out of service. All tires are properly inflated to the manufacturer's specification. Now to the passenger side. My radiator and my radiator hose, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks. The hose is not dry, rotted, afraid. It's properly clamped, and I will inspect all the rest of my hoses the same way I inspected my initial hose. The bottom radiator hose go to the water pump. It's underneath my alternator. So the water pump and the alternator are both belt driven. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts no leaks from the water pump. The belt is not cracked, not broken and secure, and not dry, rod afraid. It has no more than three fourths of play. The coolant reservoir is not cracked, not broken and secure, and has no leaks, and it should read between the ad and the full mark. Now, my exhaust connects to the manifold and runs underneath the cab to the rear of the truck here. It's not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks, 
and if it had any leaks it'll show black soot now my catwalk and my steps the catwalk and steps are not cracked not broken and secured no illegal wells no loose or missing parts free of debris the fuel tank on my drive on my passenger side and on my driver's side they're not cracked not broken and secure and no no leaks has a metal cap with a rubber seal and a metal chain the fuel tank is held up by metal and rubber straps and they're not cracked not broken and secure no illegal wells no loose or missing parts and not dry rod or free now to the driver's side where we have three systems we have the steering break in that suspension before we do those systems we want to get the loose components out the way starting with the engine oil dipstick and the transmission dipstick if you don't have um transmission dipstick no worry about it just mention what you what you have there and so the engine oil dipstick transmission dipstick the air compressor underneath the air compressor is the steering pump the power steering fluid reservoir and the gearbox all of these parts are not cracked not broken and secure they have no leaks and they read between the ad and the full mark and the air compressor and the and the steering pump are both gear driven how i will check my dipsticks i will pull them out wipe them off insert them back in pull them back out and they should read between the ad and the full mark and normally you will check the transmission with the vehicle running you check the oil with the vehicle off now system number one the steering system you have the steering shaft and the steering linkage steering shaft and steering linkage are not cracked not broken and secure no no illegal wells no loose or missing parts the steering shaft has no more than two inches of play with no debris wrapped around it and the steering linkage is connected by castle nuts and cotter pins system number two braking system i have the abs line and the brake hose they're not cracked not broken and secure no not dry rod afraid with no leaks brake hose go to the brake chamber it's not cracked not broken and secure not dented with no leaks the push rod and the slack adjuster goes into the brake chamber they're not cracked not broken and secure and no illegal wells no loose or missing parts and it's in a 90 degree angle when you pull on it by hand you should not be able to pull on it no more than one inch with the brakes release inside the wheel is my brake drum it's not cracked not broken and secure no dents inside the brake drum are my brake shoe lining they're not cracked not broken and secure and no legal wells no loose or missing parts and they're not worn dangerously thin now system number three is my suspension system starting with my leaf springs the u-bolts sitting on the axle held up by the hangers and the hanger hangers have hanger mounts connected to the frame and the shock absorber and all of these parts are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal welds no loose or missing parts and no leaks from the shock absorber now I will inspect my drive axle, braking system parts, and my suspension parts. First, I will inspect them the same way as I did, as I inspected them in the front. By naming, braking system parts, the ABS line, the brake hose, the brake chamber, the push rod, slack adjuster, the brake drum, and the brake shoe lining. Suspension parts, the leaf springs, the U-bolts, the axles, the hangers, the hanger mounts, the frame and the shock absorber now i will inspect all those parts the same way as i did in the front with the exception that i have right here is my bellow or airbag the spacer the bracket and the torque arm is inside these parts are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal wells no loose or missing parts the air bellow is not dry rod free with no leaks now i will inspect my trailer axle and sometimes the dlas the examiners might not want to walk all the way down there you can stay right there the drive axle but let's say you don't have that person so let's walk to it so here 
I will inspect my drive axle, braking system parts, and suspension parts the same way as I inspected them in the front by naming. This is where you get the points. The braking system first, the ABS line, the brake hose, the brake chamber, the push rod, slack adjuster, the brake drum, the brake shoe lining, and the suspension parts, the lee springs, the U-bolts, the axles, the hangers, the hanger mounts, the frame, the shock absorber, the bellow, the spacer, bracket, and the torque on. I will inspect all those parts the same way as I did here in the front. Now, we're going to go back to the steering, ax steering axle, the steering tire. It's not cracked, not broken, it's secure. Now dry rod afraid, it's properly inflated to the manufacturer's specification, has no leaks, and no cuts or bulges on the side walls. The treads are evenly worn. The tread depth should be no less than 432 in the front. And I will, I will, I will check my tread depth with a depth gauge. I will check my air pressure with a rubber mallet or air pressure gauge. I will inspect my drive axle tires and my trailer axle tires the same way as I inspected my front steering tire with the exception that these tires should not be mismatched nor should they be rubbing in the middle. Now, my, my steering rim is not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts. And I will inspect my drive axle rim and my trailer axle rim the same way as I did here in the front with the exception that these rims are butted together. They're butt rims. Now, all lug nuts on my steering axle, drive axle, and trailer axle, all lug nuts are not cracked, not broken, and secure. None are loose or missing. If they were loose or missing, they would show rust or shininess. All valve stems on my steering axle, drive axle, and trailer axle, they're not cracked, not broken, and secure. No leaks and have a metal cap. My oil hub is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No loose or missing parts, no leaks. I will inspect my drive axle and trailer axle the same way as I inspected my oil hub with the definition of no leaks. Now, I'll close up my hood and you wanna come to the passenger side, strap it down and go to the driver's side and strap it down. Now my door, on my truck and on my trailer opens and closes properly the door hinges are not cracked not broken and secure no illegal wells no loose or missing parts the rubber seal around the door is not dry rod afraid it's not cracked not broken and secure not dry rod afraid my handrails my handrails my cable connector holder my dummy coupling and my drive shaft is not cracked, not broken, and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, and no debris wrapped around my drive shaft. On the top here, I have a utility light or a catwalk light. It's not cracked, not broken, and secure. No condensation. Now, my cable connector box on my truck and on my trailer. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure. No, no leaks, no loose or missing parts. The service line, electric line, and I'm sorry, my, my emergency line, my electric line, and my service line, red, green, and blue. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure, not dry rod afraid on my truck and on my trailer, and with no leaks. And you go to my glad hands on my truck and on my trailer, and the electric connector. They're not cracked, not broken, and secure and no loose or missing parts, no leaks, and the rubber grommets inside are not dry rod or free. Now, my air tanks on my truck and on my trailer, they're not cracked, not broken and secure, no leaks, drain daily free of condensation. My battery box, but not for Merlin, is not cracked, not broken and secure, and the batteries inside are not cracked, not broken and secure with no leaks, no corrosion around the posts and the cables are not dry rotted or free. Now, we drop it down to the fifth wheel. 
So my fifth wheel is properly greased with no gap. It sits on the platform and the platform has mounting bolts. The release arm and the locking pin is in the lock position, which means the lock jaws are locked around the king pin. The king pin is securely mounted to the apron. All of these parts are not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal welds, no loose or missing parts. Now, my mud guard and my mud flaps on my truck and on my trailer. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, not dry rod afraid, not dragging. My DOT tape, if you swing around, you'll see my DOT tape on my truck and on my trailer. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. These are my reflectors and clean and clear. Now on my truck, I have my left turn signal, my right turn signal, the four way flashers and the brake lights are red in color on my truck and on my trailer. The reverse light and tag light and the tag light on my trailer are white in color. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. All of these lights are not cracked, not broken and secure. No condensation. Now, I have clearance of three feet, zero space and three. So clearance of three, zero, three. My header board is not cracked, not broken and secure. My header board has no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts, and it's strong enough for cargo not to crash through. Now, I have my landing gear and my crank is in the lock position. My pads are in the raised position. They're not cracked, not broken and secure, no illegal wells, no loose or missing parts. The frame on my trailer and the deck they're metal. They're not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts. To my ABS light, it's not cracked, not broken and secure. And amber in color with no condensation. To the rear of the trailer. Now, I already inspected all my lights, so that's out the way. So my DOT bumper is not cracked, not broken and secure. No illegal wells, no loose or missing parts. And my tag, I did, in the, I did already. My tag light, I did already and all my lights. So this right here concludes my pre-trip inspection. And this here is the greatest pre-trip inspection master edition. And the books will be on amazon.com. If you're interested in the greatest pre-trip book, class A and B, also the skills book and the exam book, they're on amazon.com. All you do is type in my name, Jeffrey Mills, J-E-F-F-R-E-Y-M-I-L-L-S. And the books are there. You can get them as a package deal and in a very, 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 very much so help you out to have success. And, and if you have any questions, feel free. Feel free to give me a call. And we are here for you. Our website is thecdlbookclub.com. That's T-H-E-C-D-L bookclub.com. And you go to the website and you can just hit the link and, and whatever book you're interested in, you can just go right to it and you'll have it. And uh, feel free to give me a call or go to the website. This is Jeff Mills and this is the greatest pre-trip inspection, Master Edition. See you soon.